Your reaction at the end of regulation, did you think that the game was over? No, I was happy we didn't lose. <laughs> and they didn't have an opportunity to score on us, so that was my reaction. What did uh, Houston do differently in this one after you guys so thoroughly dominated them in the previous matchups? Well, they play hard, you know. Uh, uh, they really compete, and, you know, that's, that's a tribute to Coach Adelman, who always has them ready to play, and, and their players kept, kept bugging and fighting. Uh, Martin kept scoring, making, making tough shots, and um, they got some good players, so uh, they made it hard on us, but uh, the defense came through at the end. You have a potential matchup against Chris Paul. In this later stage of your career, do you still get up for those, you know, those individual matchups? Yeah, you're talking about one of the best point guards in the game. Uh, but uh, I'm not, I, don't, I don't guard the point guards, so I guard the bigger guards. But, uh, you know, he's, he plays at a high level. And, uh, if that's a matchup that we have, it's, you know, that's going to be a tough matchup for us. And tonight, the Marion post up, was that something you guys were actively trying to exploit against the smaller Lee and Martin? Um, it, that was something that Sean was going in, so we are going to, you know, go to him until he got tired. Um, we've done that with Dirk and uh, different guys, uh, you know, throughout the year and, uh, you know, for tricks, he, he, had, he was the bigger guy and he was going, so... We were going to play through him. Is there any difference for you between playing with Jason Kidd and Steve Nash earlier on in your career? Can you compare those two guys? Well, they're not the, uh, two different type of point guards. You know, both, both of them are facilitators, but, you know, you know, uh, I mean, when I started with Jason Kidd, you know, and, you know, I know, I know what kind of competitor he is, and, and then, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, you get you forget I played with Stephon Marbury too. You know, like he was a good guard as well. You know, you know, I played with three three great guards. You know, and uh, that, 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 you know they are very talented guys. You know, all of them are different in, in certain areas. You know, probably the best scoring guard out of all of them, probably Steph. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, JK got JK bigger than both of them, so he's able to, you know, to do things. And he might be the fastest of both of them to the up and down the court too. Like I've never seen nobody. Like he be one man fast break, and um, Steve, you know, Steve is a, a, a pro guy, very, a, a very, very good pro guy. You know, he's gonna probe until he finds what he wants. You know, and uh, all of them, all of them are talented. Well, all of them, you know, what I'm saying they play basketball. Of course, you know, uh, J Kid and uh, Steve are more, more, more sort of passers than, than Steph, of course. But Steph did, did, did dime up. So did you did you feel like Steph? You bring up Marbury. Did you feel like he got an unfair rap? Um, unfair rap to what? I don't know what I mean. What rap did he get? He's had a very negative reputation, you know, in the press. Man, that sucks, you know. You know, I mean, you know, I think I think he was a hell of a guard, you know, hell of a player, you know. Uh, you know, I think he's more of a, I think he's more of a two guard more than a point guard. But he was just, you know, just just he just he's just a hell of an athlete. You know, he's a uh, good teammate, you know. Um, I mean, I, I just felt bad for where rap he ever got by. I mean, I thought he, he had a great career, you know. I'm pretty sure he didn't go out like he wanted to. I mean, everybody wanted to go out with a championship, but he had a great career, you know. And, um, you know, I wish him the best of luck in his family. After last season, do you feel more comfortable this year, you know, when you're playing point guard, or is that still a work in progress for you personally? On some point, for sure, I feel more comfortable with the second season, obviously. But I seem to walk um, a lot of things because I missed, like, a lot of games, so... I still need to work on a couple of things, for sure. You know, in your opinion, was this season a success or a failure? Well, you can't call it a success if you don't make the playoffs. You're not a success, but I won't call it a failure because it's a winning record under the circumstances. You know, a failure, if this is a failure, you got to come up with some other word for some of the really bad teams and teams behind them. But you can't celebrate it. There's no parties going on. They're not going to hold a parade for this. They can be proud of it, but they can't celebrate it. Keith Calkins with the Fox TV station here in Houston. I think given the particulars involving this particular rocket season, injuries and the things that you can't control, I believe Rick Adelman did a tremendous job at getting the max out of the roster that was available, especially after the trade deadline when Battier was moved out, more time for Courtney Lee, Kyle Lowry really stepped up, probably a, a top ten point guard in this league, not sure anybody really 
kind of saw that coming. Chase Bundinger, young talent, is proving to be a rotation player, I think, on a team that can go to the playoffs. So in terms of what Rick Adelman did, the kind of job he did with the talent that was available for him, given the handicaps of the injury to Yao Ming, I think they pretty much maxed out in terms of expectations. Uh, Jordan, you said you might have a new look next year. Can you, can you talk about that? Um, I mean, I don't really know yet. I mean, I'm still thinking about uh, snipping off the dress. Uh, depends on how, depends on how I feel, but you know, we're gonna see. Your good friend Dwight Howard. Do you think he would have any interest coming here to this team? Are I mean, you going to be in his ear? Since I'm on, since I'm on the team, I mean, there's always a chance. Like I said, me and Dwight, we we real good friends, but. Uh, that's a decision for Dwight. I mean, he's been in Orlando, he's been a fan favorite. He had that city on his back for his whole career, so it's going to be tough to pull him away from that. So this was the first full year that you've been here that Tracy McGrady was not a part of the team. Can you talk about the, how different things were? Um, you know, that was so long ago. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I ain't really thought about it. You know, that era is long gone. And what he did for this organization was great. And uh, I mean, I think we play well without uh, without the McGrady. How different is it not having that star to rely upon and just having a group approach now? Well, that's a lot different, but you know, we've gotten used to it. We've won. We've won without a star. Had winning seasons both years, so we just got to do extra stuff to get over the hump. Can you evaluate your rookie season? A lot of people have you on their all-rookie team. But what can you, you know, how do you feel about how you did this? Um, I thought it pretty well. Uh, can always do better. I have my ups and downs, you know, being sent down to D-League early. But when I came back, I uh, tried to come back and make a strong impact. Um, try to play well with my teammates and get wins. So I think uh, earlier in the season, when the first season first began, you know, I don't think I played so well, you know, coming off the bench, uh, getting maybe five minutes a game just because, couldn't find time for me in the rotation, you know, with Yao, Scola, Brad, Jordan, you know, then progressively as the year went on, you know, um, the coach started having more confidence in me and put me in the game. So, you know, overall, I thought, you know, my first year was, was a pretty good year.